Wax resist on greenware. Please take a look up here. It's important for you to watch this demonstration because very soon in future, you, these demonstrations will be graded. You will be required to watch them and answer questions. All right, so wax resist on greenware. So this is greenware. There's a bowl. Somebody made this bowl last semester and they never claimed it, so I just decided to use it for my example. I'm going to turn it over because on the, the back side of the bowl, I have drawn a design in pencil. This is bone dry, so you can use wax resist on work that's bone dry. And wax resist is going to push away the glaze, and what you see is the actual decoration. You can draw it with pencil. Like, let's say I want to put on the foot of this, maybe I want to put some circles on the foot. So draw with pencil first, so you can see what you're going to do. Um, or you can put the design in it with uh, like a tool. It's your choice. Then you're going to get wax resist. And I have little containers that have wax resist in it, and there's large containers that say wax. Um, then you'll squeeze some into the container. If these containers get clogged up, um, I can clean them out, or you can take hot water and clean them out. So I'm going to pour just a little bit in here. Mine started to dry up already. Uh, don't get this on your clothes because it doesn't come out your clothes very well. And if you're allergic to latex, don't use this. I'll give you acrylic paint instead. Okay, so I have a brush that I'm going to use. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to brush on the wax where I have little shapes. And I've already done some of this today. So here we go. I have some wax. I'm just going to paint it right on the areas that I don't want to glaze with the underglaze. Anytime you have wax resist left over, please put it back in the container so it doesn't go to waste. And then I would finish this up. I'll do that next class period. If you ever see a brush and it looks like this and it's all firm, that means that the wax dried on it. So get some hot water and clean it off with hot soapy water. Then your next step is you have to let this dry. You can't underglaze on it unless it's 100% dry. So these little dots here are going to dry. Then when they're dry, your next step is to get your underglaze and you're going to glaze it up. So I have my black underglaze here. And you can see I've already put on some here, but I'm going to put some on another section. And I'm just going to be using the same one for all my demos. So you can see as I'm painting, please take a look, the wax is resisting the underglaze. So it pushes it away. You want to make sure you get an even coat on each time, so do two or three coats. You'll also notice that the glaze has little bits on it that show up. If you don't want that on there, and you want it to be clean, you can take a Q-tip and you can clean it off right away. Or you can use a little sponge and just pat it on there and it'll take off that glaze. So you can see that how that works. Some people like the little designs that are on top of the wax. Sometimes they stay, sometimes they come off. But the wax will melt in the kiln. And then what you'll see is the color of the clay where you put the wax. So that's my example of um, a wax resist pattern and this is can be done on bone dry clay right that's totally fine um, so that's one example of using wax resist oh and the pencil burns away too so I'm going to turn this over and I want to show you combining sgraffito and wax because that's a possibility too because it's your choice about your design so I started with little circles with wax I painted those on then I painted two coats of black then I used a sgraffito tool to carve out. This is bone dry though, it was so dusty. I had a mask on and I was being very careful and I took it to the garbage and I very carefully got rid of the dust. It's way too dusty. Please don't do sgraffito on something that's bone dry. But if your work dries out and you're like, oh my gosh, I was gonna sgraffito and it's too dry, come and see me and um, I, can, I can share with you a safe way that you can do it where you're not gonna harm yourself or other people. Um, but preferably do it before it dries out. Then what I did was I went ahead and put wax around the circles. And then I added wax in some other areas. Uh, because my idea is to show you that you can layer wax on top of things you have already painted. So if you've underglazed and sgraffitoed and waxed, you can wax even more. And you can layer upon layer upon layer. It's very complicated and it gets very complicated, so if, if you want to give it a try, do. It's not required for this project, but I just wanted to make sure, excuse me, that you knew that you can do that. 
Um, okay, take that wax. Try not to leave your brushes in the water as well. Clean them off and then dry them, set them down flat. Okay, so then when that's, that wax is dry, I'm going to take a different color, maybe yellow or purple, and then I'm going to paint over some areas. So then I'm going to have color on top of color, layered on color, and the wax that's around these little circles is, is going to have, you're going to see the black. That's my hope. So I've done this many times before, and sometimes it's really hard to know what it's going to look like until you're done. Um, but if you're ever not sure, we can sit down and we can talk through it. So that's wax on greenware. That's something that's never been fired before. Um, I also, the last thing is I want to show you waxing on something that's already been fired. So this is like a little picture frame I made a long time ago. And you can wax something that has been fired. I waxed this area right here because I thought, oh, if I wax that, then I'll be able to glaze the outside. So yes, you can wax something after it's fired. What if your design is something that you could draw on with pencil after it's fired? What if you want to draw like little designs on something and then you wax that? Yes, you can wait. You can get it fired first and then you can draw your design, wax, and then you paint. The other thing I wanted to show you about things that have already been fired, and this is my last one, is that you see these, whoops, let me move it forward. There's flowers here. And so if I want the color to be inside the cracks here and not around the outside, what I can do is I can fire multiple times. I can fire something in, when it comes out, I can reglaze it and then buff it off. So let's say I just want the clay, or the glaze rather, to be in the cracks here. So what I can do is I can get my glaze and I can paint it in the crack, but it doesn't have to be perfect and in the little patterns, like here's a flower, I want the glaze to go in. Then I have to wait for it to totally dry. Then when it's completely dry, I'm gonna pretend that it's completely dry, then I'll take a sponge that's a little bit wet with clean water, and then I will very lightly buff off the surface so the glaze only stays in the cracks. And I'm not gonna clean it out all the way here, I'll just do a little bit so you can kind of see how it goes. But this is the way to get glaze just in the cracks. And usually this is the last step before you get the final fire. So this can also be done. So if you have lots of textures and drawings and you want to fire it first and you only want glaze in the drawing, this is the way to do it. Okay? So as I'm walking around today and talking with people, um, you might need to like jot down in your in your sketchbook like what you're going to do if I say, oh, you should fire that first and then use wax resist, or if you can remember, that's fine.